Hello gentlemen, welcome to the 5.3 video on Boyle's Law and the Cartesian Diver. Now Boyle's Law focuses on gases, so let's first define what a gas is. A gas is a state of matter in which molecules are free to move due to fewer restrictive forces, those intermolecular forces that we've been talking about, and it has an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. Now Robert Boyle was an Irish chemist, and he was important because he's the first guy to actually look at gases in a quantitative way, in a mathematical way, whereas before they were just all done through qualitative means, you know, conceptual. So he presented a law that res relates pressure and volume. One of the major concepts he used is that gases exert pressure on their container. That's what he really focused on. And an example that I'm giving is <clears throat> a balloon. We know that a balloon stays inflated because the air on the inside is, is exerting pressure on the insides of that balloon. Now, what exactly is pressure? Let's define it. Pressure is the amount of force over a certain area. We call pressure the force per area. Pressure is measured in a few units. Some common units are ATMs, which is an atmosphere, and millimeters of Hg, which is millimeters of mercury. The relationship between these two is that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. In the international community, meaning worldwide, um, we have to have a common set of units. So the international um, unit, measure, uh, unit of measurement for pressure is the kilopascal, kPa. One atmosphere is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. So these are all related and used units of measurement. Now let's look a little deeper into Boyle's law. So Boyle related pressure and volume. His law states that for a given amount of gas at a constant temperature, really important, the volume of the gas varies inversely with its pressure. So as your volume increases, your pressure decreases. As your volume decreases, your pressure increases. They are inversely proportional. We've talked about that before. Here's an example. Say we have 10 students in the classroom. This classroom has a fairly small area or small volume. These particles would hit, if I, was having, if I would have the kids, you know, go from one end of the classroom to the other end at, you know, 10 miles per hour, if they could do so, they would hit either end or either wall of the classroom way more frequently than if they were in the gym. If I had the same 10 students in a gym running from one side to the other at 10 miles per hour, they would take much longer. They would exert less force per area in a given amount of time. Thus, they would exert less pressure in a larger volume. So larger volume, less pressure. Smaller volume, more pressure. Now, we know that molecules really never stop moving unless we get to um, absolute zero, which we don't get to. So kinetic theory of matter states just that, that the particles that make up matter are always in motion. Now, these particles that are always in motion, they will collide with one another and with whatever's holding those particles, if we're talking about a gas especially. So the collisions of gas molecules create pressure which is force per area, on the walls of the container. Here's an example. We have three different scenarios with three containers, differing volumes. As I go this way, as I decrease in my volume, the number of gas particles hitting any section of the wall increases, and the pressure also increases. Because the number, the frequency at which those particles are hitting the walls of the container increases. Now, this gives us something. That inverse relationship that we've been talking about can be represented mathematically this way. The pressure times the volume is a constant. This is kind of like when we're talking about waves. So the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Frequency and wavelength were inversely proportional. As one went up, the other had to decrease because the speed of light is constant. It's the same, same kind of concept here. Pressure times volume equals constant. Now this K is a constant for a given sample of air at constant temperature. So all these given samples of air will all have the same constant here. So in order to keep this constant, pressure and volume have to 
alternate or be inversely proportional. In your investigation, we increased and decreased the volume of air in order to measure the change in pressure. We did that and we saw it in the graph and it was fantastic. When you decrease the volume, the molecules of air inside the syringe were colliding with the side of the syringe more often and as a result, the pressure increased. You felt this increase on your hand. As you pushed, you felt the pressure on your hand. In order to mathematically relate the syringe volume and pressure before you pushed and the syringe volume and pressure after you've pushed, we must use this mathematical relationship. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. This is the initial pressure and volume is equal to the final pressure and volume. That has to be true if we're talking about the same gas in both scenarios. If you're compressing a the gas, then you know the pressure and volume you had before is equal to the pressure and volume you had after because pressure and volume equals a K. And if it's the same sample of air, it's still air. So K is equal to K. But we'll talk more about that later. Here's an example. A one liter sample of oxygen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere, so it is at a pressure of one atmosphere, excuse me. If the pressure were increased to two atmospheres, what would be the resulting volume? So my initial pressure is one atmosphere. My initial volume is one liter. I increase this pressure to two atmospheres, and I want to know, well, what is the corresponding volume? Pressure and volume have an inversely proportional relationship. So mathematically, I would solve this way. Here's my base equation. I rearrange this equation to solve for my final volume. And it's here. Final volume equals P1 times V1 over P2. I fill in. Initial pressure of one atmosphere times my initial volume of one liter divided by my final pressure of two liters. And I get a final volume, V2, is equal to 0.5 liters. Now, does that make sense? Absolutely. If my pressure is doubled, I go from one atmosphere to two atmospheres. In an in in inversely proportional relationship, that means that my volume must be half. So from one liter to 0.5 liters. As one increases, the other decreases by the same amount, proportionally. So gentlemen, please take notes on this, and we'll do some practice on this in class. Adios.